If you're like most women going through the perimenopause to menopause transition, weight gain is one of the most frustrating things for you. And it doesn't matter if it's just for vanity or if it's because you feel like your clothes are tighter, you're not comfortable, you feel less sexy. All of these affect your self-esteem, your productivity, and your health going forward. So in this video, we're gonna talk all about what to do about the changing metabolism in midlife. Hi and welcome, if you're new here, I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch. I am the menopause doctor at the Brigham and Women's Hospital, a member of NAMS, the North American Menopause Society, and your favorite YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, menopause, doctor extraordinaire. The reason I wanted to talk about weight today is because I pulled you guys over on my Instagram. If you're not already following me over there, do so, because I let you weigh in on a lot of these topics. And what most of you wanted to know about was what to do with stubborn weight gain in midlife and at menopause. So the first thing that we need to talk about here is that a lot of these changes are physiologic and for lack of better words, out of our control. What does that mean? Well, we're used to having a lot of things be in our control. We're used to exercising more or eating less and getting our body to behave in a way that we wanted. But as we lose estrogen and testosterone, those change the way we metabolize foods, and that also plays a role in something called our insulin resistance. Again, how we digest sugars and carbs. Whether we like it or not, metabolism can decline anywhere from about 15 to 25% by doing nothing different. And this seems like a cruel joke <laughs> that has been played on us, but to understand that fact, we need to look at what's happening to our body physiologically and help you alleviate the burden that you are doing something wrong. Estrogen plays a big role in our bodies from head to toe. And I think that as we grow up, we think about our sex hormones as giving us periods, causing breast tissue and getting us pregnant. But whether we like it or not, they do so many other things like control our body temperature, our hair, skin and nails, and yes, even our metabolism. So there's two things that happen. There is an indirect way that estrogen plays a role in metabolism and a direct way. Directly, we think that estrogen does act on receptors either in the liver, the pancreas, the gut, but specifically in the pancreas and how insulin works. If insulin doesn't work as well as it used to, that means that we will gain weight faster. The other way estrogen plays a role in our metabolism is indirectly. A big um, parallel I can make is sleep. If we're not sleeping well, which happens a lot as we lose our estrogen, women are tossing and turning and hot at night, well then our metabolism is also going to suck. It's our primitive brain telling us that there is some stressor for which we need to store our energy. Now, again, the stressor is the loss of estrogen, that physiologic change, and hence we're tossing and turning. But our primitive bodies don't know the difference. So let's talk about now, what can we do knowing this to better prepare ourselves as we go through the transition? First and obviously, nutrition and exercise are super important. And I'm not a bona fide nutritionist or personal trainer, so I am going to let the experts do that. But I do want to give you my two cents here in terms of nutrition and diet is that nothing that is popular or fad is ever going to actually work long term. It is of my strong belief that the best diet for you is probably different than your friends and different from what's popular right now. Most of the time research shows that a Mediterranean diet in lean proteins, good amount of healthy fats and carbohydrates are the best for you. Now, I know there's a lot about intermittent fasting and tracking your macros, doing your calories, um, all different types of things. But I think no matter how long we play this game, which a lot of time we've played for many, many years leading up to menopause, we all know that the best diet is probably one that contains all the right food groups. Nutrition is going to be more important at the end of the day in losing weight and exercise is more helpful in maintaining weight. When it comes to exercise, if you ask me, weight lifting and weight bearing exercise is really important and undervalued. You can also overtrain your body. And so I really think two to four times a week doing some mixture of uh, weight bearing, weight training and light cardio is probably chef's kiss. So the next question you might have is what about hormone therapy? Does that cause weight gain? Does that cause weight loss? Let me sort of help you break this down. 
Studies have shown that women who take hormone therapy gain less weight than women who don't, and women who take hormone therapy have less diabetes than women who don't. And I don't want that to be taken as, that's why you should do hormone therapy, or that's the only way to lose weight, no. But I think this correlates back to the fact that estrogen does play a role in our insulin resistance. Because when women are given hormone therapy, they have less diabetes, that to me says it's improving the insulin's ability to function properly. And that may then correlate to women being able to better metabolize sugars and foods, and also indirectly, remember, women who take hormone therapy may mitigate those hot flashes and other symptoms that are causing them to not sleep well or to binge eat, feel fatigued, and not want to pay attention to their diet and exercise. So there's lots of reasons why. Now, a lot of times when I post videos like this, and I did one here on why I don't think hormone therapy is gonna cause weight gain, I get a lot of comments saying, absolutely not, I really think that hormone therapy caused weight gain. Now, we have proven through trials that hormone therapy does not cause weight gain. Does that mean that every single person um, falls within that and there are no outliers? No. But for the most part, I actually find that women who take hormone therapy feel better, sleep better, function better, and do actually start to get their metabolism to work for them, not against them. Now, what if you don't wanna use hormone therapy or hormone therapy has not helped your weight? There are a couple of other options that we can choose from. Now remember, all of these are prescription medications. You need to talk to your doctor about these, and this is for educational purposes and not direct medical advice. One of the medications I often talk to my patients about is a medication called metformin. Metformin or glucophage is a medication that's FDA approved for prediabetes and diabetes, and the reason it works really well for these diagnoses is because it helps your insulin function better. So if you're following my same methodology here, if we can get your insulin to function better, then we can get it to actually help you in terms of good digestion and revving your metabolism. So metformin is something that you can talk to your doctor about. If you're using it for weight and not diabetes, a short period of time can be really helpful and it tends to help with about five to seven pounds for weight loss. Two other medications are used off label for weight loss and the first is called Wellbutrin or Bupropion and the second is Flobantrin. Flobantrin is also FDA approved for low libido so it could have some really good positive benefits here. We think that the way these work to help reduce um, weight is because the dopamine reduces cravings for certain foods and particularly carbohydrates. Both of these help with, again, about that five to seven pound weight loss. And if you are really looking to just turn that ship around, while these aren't necessarily significant amounts of weight, they definitely can really help women feel a lot better. And again, just kind of kickstart losing some of the weight as opposed to continuing to gain lots of weight like they may have been for years before they've seen me. Now, there are medications FDA approved for weight loss, and two options that I often talk to my patients about are Contrave and Qsimia. Now, typically, I do start with some of these other medications I've already mentioned, and I make darn sure that their exercise, that their sleep, that their nutrition is really good, because these are simply you know, not going to work in the long term if your healthy habits were never healthy to begin with. Now, both of these medications are meant to be used in a short-term manner. They can cause side effects. You can feel stimulated, anxious, hot, sweaty, flushed, or weird, and those things do go along with it. So these are, again, medications that are controlled substances that you should have a detailed conversation with your doctor about. And you may have heard about the new injectables for diabetes, whether it's uh, Ozempic or Govi, and these are used to help women lose weight, men as well. And these can help with significant amounts of weight. They show really good safety and efficacy profiles and data. And so more information is going to be coming out about these. These injectables really do show great promise in terms of their safety, their efficacy, and utilization, as well as helping diabetics and not just with weight loss. So these are going to become really important medications to be talking to your doctor about when it comes to metabolism and reducing the impact of weight on your chronic diseases. So as you can see, there's lots of options here from hormone therapy all the way up to medications that are controlled substances that should be used for short periods of time to using some of the medication we use to decrease A1Cs in diabetics. So there is a lot 
here. Now we haven't even touched on other things like surgery and just all the other lifestyle things that you can do. But I really hope this gave you sort of a comprehensive overview of why metabolism changes, how hormone therapy may be helpful and what else you can do. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you love this channel, please subscribe, free to do so. You can always change your mind later. If this was super helpful, send it to a friend, put it on your socials, and definitely drop me a comment below to tell me what worked for you. I'll see you guys next week for a brand new video. Bye, everyone.